How's it going guys? It's Nathan from Nathan's DIY Garage and today we're going to put a CCV or PCV valve on a BMW 318i. Okay, so here's the current situation. This car runs and drives fine, has a rough idle on cold start. We replaced the ICV on the front and made no difference. Uh, there's no codes and you can smell it runs rich. So back here on these 318s on this M44 is the PCV, the crankcase breather. Has a hose that runs in there, back to the valve cover, and this gets vacuum off this plate. So we're gonna show you how to take this off today. So we're gonna start off with this. Um, we're gonna go ahead and unplug the TPS. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it right now. We're pushing the, the wire holder, it comes off. We're gonna go unplug the ICV, same way. We're gonna go ahead and plug this guy here. I think this is something with the trash control. I can't remember. Anyway, unplug him the same way. At this point in time, <clears throat> I think we go ahead and just take apart. Uh, we're gonna pop these two off, I should say. And we're gonna just pull the mass airflow out of the air box. We're gonna try to just go ahead and leave the air box in place. I don't know if we have enough flex for that or not. And then at that point in time, we could probably leave the throttle body cables in place throttle cables I'm sorry and we're just gonna try to go ahead and flip this intake up to the side uh, there's only two bolts on the bottom of that CCV and we're gonna try to uh, just take it off while it's in the car we may have to unplug this vacuum line right here we may or may not have to unplug this guy right here we probably will and this guy just to get us a little more flex to flip it up okay so here we go we're gonna go ahead and pull this vacuum line like I just said and we'll lay him right there and we'll go ahead and pull this bigger vacuum line off like that lay him off the side we'll go ahead and pull this rear off lay him off the side and there's a bolt in the back which I did not tighten up and it's a it's like a 13 millimeter on this one and that holds it right there so we'll have to touch that we're gonna go ahead and flip the air breather, the two little latches open here. I'm about to grab a screwdriver for that. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and flip these two latches. These screwdriver, in this case a little pair of needle nose, that flips open and releases the mass airflow from the box. I'm gonna set you guys back up here. And at this point in time, we're gonna go ahead and push this out of the air box. Like that. We're gonna take, there you go, take one hand, we're gonna screw the mass airflow, pull it out like that, free it, and now at this point in time we are out of the air box. Okay, so we're gonna go and take our little battery impact, and we're gonna go ahead and take a 13 for that, stand by one second. Okay, so we got the impact here, I'm sorry it's 11, not a 13. We're gonna go ahead and take out the top bolt up here. And try to lay this stuff off to the side where it's not gonna get lost. We're gonna take out this guy right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and take out this guy right here. And at that point in time, our intake is free. And we're gonna try to do this without taking a bunch of this stuff off. Let's just see if we can flip it up out of the way. Yeah, let's kind of set it back a little bit. At this point in time, set it back like that. Let me make sure I still got you guys in the shot. Okay, lift it up a little bit. Now back here, there's gonna be a metal gasket that sits on top of that. I'm gonna pull him off real gently. Set him out of the way of danger. And there's a plate that sets on here and there's a water line hooked to the side of it. Let me see if you guys can see that or not. Kind of. You can see the water line right here that plugs in the side of that little thin plate. And we're gonna try not to take that off. We'll go ahead and pull the back vacuum line off of it and separate it. And we're just gonna try to lift it up and be careful not to lose the lower gasket, okay? So at this point in time, we could actually get uh, to these two Allen bits right there, Allen bolts. We're gonna go ahead and pull those off right now. 
Okay, so here we're back again. Uh, this is a T5 Allen bit. I'm gonna use it on a little impact. We're gonna get in here, make sure it's seated all the way in. We're gonna pull those out, make sure not to drop anything in the intake. Things will go bad if you do that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this lower one out. Like I said, being careful not to force anything. That one actually has a little bit of goo in the Allen head part of it. We're gonna rake that out of there. Like I said, being very careful not to let anything fall down and then take tubes in the engine. And we'll come back in here and pull this guy out. Just like that. And it looks like it's bad. It's really hard to tell on these. You can't take these apart, well, without breaking them. And you can see here it has a bunch of oil kind of packed in the hole. Now, if you look down inside there, you can see it has a bunch of junk down inside there. We think this is where a vacuum leak is coming from. Now, here's the unfortunate part. I don't have a new one of these. All I have is another used one here on the shelf. So, uh, the car the other one came off of ran fine. We're going to go ahead and install this used one, and we'll just have to start the car up and see what we got. Okay, so here is the used one I just took off. It looks like it's really good shape. And I look down the hole, I don't see any chunks of old oil and crap. You can see the old one looks pretty beat. If you look down in it, you probably can't see it on the camera. I can see debris and all kinds of junk down inside there. It's a good telltale sign that it's bad. So let's go ahead and reinstall this guy, just the way we took it off. And let me get my rag here. We're gonna do a little cleaning before we just put it back on there. We're going to clean the mating surface where it was going on to make sure we have a good seal. We're going to inspect that for cracks. We don't have any cracks. It all looks good. So let's go ahead and reinstall. Make sure you reinstall where it's facing the right direction. You never want to start anything at all with an impact. And you should torque these down. These would be torqued to seven foot pounds. So it's like everything else, guys. If you're using a long extension, you want to torque it to 10, and then you end up about seven. Uh, any kind of extension you put on a torque wrench, especially if you're going from a half inch drive to a three eighths drive, is going to knock some of the torque out of it. Okay, so we didn't torque it down. I took a three eighths drive ratchet and just snugged them up where I could feel it's about right. You guys can use a torque wrench, it might be a little difficult. Uh, you might actually have to take the whole thing out to use a torque wrench on it. So let's go back in with this thing. Let's make sure that the gasket surface, and it has a metal gasket on the bottom. Let's make sure that's nice and clean. And we're going to go ahead and put this guy back down on top of that. And it's very important when you're working on a BMW or anything at all, to never force anything down. Now one thing I do wanna do here, this car was taken apart when we got it. I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple minutes. We're gonna look around, make sure there's another vacuum leaks down below. I've already done this once. We just need to be 110% sure there's nothing else going on. Okay, so there's no other lines off anywhere that we can see. So we'll go ahead and put our gasket back on. These metal gaskets on the intake, you're not supposed to use sealer on them. Um, that usually doesn't cause a problem if you don't. It's not like it has oil in it. And so we're gonna go ahead and put this back on here. Like that. And make sure that gasket seated all the way down. And we're gonna go ahead and just set this guy back on here real gently. And just be very careful to watch where all your connections are. And make sure that this big hose going to the bottom of the intake did not fall off like it just did. Let me go ahead and let me pull you guys in here. Don't want to leave anything out and cause a problem for anybody. So this is where we're at. And going to the back of the throttle body boot, there's a big hose right here that needs to plug into the throttle body boot. Make sure you don't knock that out and make sure it's locked all the way in. It's just one thing that is real common to get left undone on these and then it causes a problem. So 
let's go ahead and reinstall this stuff make sure it's seated down good you might go ahead and rework the mass airflow back in before you bolt it down there we go just like that make sure it's all clocked right there should not be a great deal of resistance anywhere on the system on any of these tubes or any of these hoses okay so there's that we'll wait to lock those in to the very end and let's go ahead and spin back on the two nuts and the long bolt And we'll definitely get the torque wrench and torque these down. These are the same way. I'll put these at 10 foot pounds. I'm gonna go and put her vacuum line back in the bottom here. Go and put her small one. Wherever you went, right there. Plug him back in. You guys can't see that, so there we go. So we just plug this vacuum line here back in. We just plugged a little vacuum line back in. Uh, we're gonna plug this guy here in, push until he clicks. We're gonna plug the IAC in. We're gonna go ahead and plug your traction control thing back in. Okay, so it looks like we're pretty much good to go. Uh, I'm gonna go grab the torque wrench. We're gonna torque these bolts down. We're gonna clip those two clips on the mass airflow in and we should be ready. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these things snugged up by hand first and you don't want to tighten this back bolt to the very very end in our case we're not even going to tighten until we know what this fixes it in case we got to take it back apart you do this by hand you're going to see it move the intake around it's going to snug it down okay and on um, these m44s like to go these first we'll just kind of snug it up a little more You're trying to basically get it torqued as even as you can. Okay, right there is clicked at 10. It's clicked at 10. And that's clicked at 10. You might be able to go a little tighter with those. Those are 11, not 10 millimeter. They have a little bigger shaft on them. But if you take a quarter inch drive ratchet after you torque it at 10 with this guy, and it feels like nothing with this because it's such a long handle, you know and you take a quarter inch drive ratchet, it's actually fairly tight. Um, so let's go ahead and always remember guys, when you get to use your torque wrench, you want to loosen it back up, turn it all back to zero. You never want to leave it uh, turned up. That'll mess up the settings on it. So I'm gonna try to find somewhere to put this guy. It's not gonna fall off and crash. Set him over there out of the way. So at this point in time, we're gonna hook up our hose back on top of our CCV. We're gonna go and just stick this guy, something crawling on my hair, it's nice. Stick this guy back on here like this. And I'll get a straight screwdriver and we'll fix that up. Uh, for right now, let's go ahead and start this thing up and see if that even fixed the problem. Okay, so it started to ride up that time. You didn't have to feather the gas to start it from cold, but it's still idling kind of rough. And I could hear a hiss at the back of the intake back here. It sounds like something's leaking. So we don't know, there's a couple different variables on this. Uh, it could still be a vacuum line down under the, the bottom intake. Uh, it could be a problem with the DISA valve on the side of the intake, which is right there. Uh, it could be internal leak or that could be cracked. So we're gonna take this thing for a drive to see if it clears up, come back. And I guess if not, I really wish I had a smoke machine. That'd be perfect to tell what's going on. I don't have that. So we'll get back, we're still doing it. We'll spray some carb cleaner around the edges of everything and see if we can't figure it out. Okay, so it runs perfect. It just, the idle is the only thing it has a problem with. I just went out and drove it. It run just as perfect as it could be. 
if you turn the AC on, you come to stop sign, it wants to die. Once you're off idle, it's perfect. So, I guess next thing I'm going to do is take some carburetor cleaner and start spraying around uh, the gasket surfaces on the intake, spray around that, that DISA. Now the DISA, when you floor it, it works perfect. The car makes good power, it's nice, quiet, smooth ride. You know, once you're off idle, it's just like it's a brand new car. So we're gonna go ahead and spray around, try to check for, for that. I mean, we could have a very tiny bit of a spark plug wire problem. We're not getting any codes at all. Just absolutely nothing. Nothing pending, nothing stored. Uh, so we'll keep going with it and try to get it figured out. Okay, so we went ahead and sprayed around the intake, sprayed around everything. I can't find any vacuum leaks anywhere. Um, I think at this point in time, we'll probably go and do another compression test, even though it was fine. The only thing that concerns me a little bit is I did the injector cleaner, it came back, but then I didn't drive it. After I did the injector cleaner, I let it set again. So we'll do a compression test. If the compression test is fine, uh, we might go ahead and just do a set of plug wires. It runs under ice so nice, I can't hardly see it being any kind of major problem. And it seems to get off idle. It's nice and clear. It runs perfect. And uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, probably get plug wires coming and get that sorted out. And uh, if we do compression tests in the morning, we'll go ahead and do a video of that also.